Kinnaman. Jane, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning, ma'am. Good morning, Dr. Areta. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Best Friday morning, everyone. Happy, happy Independence good Day. Yes. Good morning, Anne. Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning. I'm morning. here. I'm here in the office. Sir. The sir. Is good morning. Hi, sir. Good morning po. Nasa bahay lang ako. <laughs> uh -uh. Ako nandito sa bahay. Mm -mm. Work from home. <laughs> yes. Ito, ito yes, ang sir. work from home. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh -uh. Ako? Hindi ba? Ito ang work from home. Uh -huh. Ako, I'm reporting to my office because wow. my internet connectivity is not stable at home. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's the challenge. Smiling at us. That's the reality. Hi, Dr. Aretha. Hi, Dr. Aretha. Dr. Aretha, good morning po. Good morning po. Good morning, Dr. Aretha. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Dr. Aretha. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody is well and enjoying a fine weather. Sana yes. Sana fine lahat ng ating mga weather. Today, we are commemorating the 122nd anniversary of the Declaration of the Independence of the Philippines. We are remembering our heroes, both the sung and unsung, who fought bravely so as to assure our independence from our colonizers. Speaking of heroes, the faculty members, teachers, and our administrators are considered modern day heroes because despite of a holiday, we are here seeking ways to address the issues in education amidst the pandemic. Ways to improve the educational system and ways to continue education despite the challenges. I would like to greet Commissioner Aldrin Darilag, officials from CHED Region 8, Dr. George Colorado, and Ma'am Kathy Iglesias and Mamail Javier, who are part of our Content Development Committee. 
as well as our beloved presidents of the 10 SUCs, especially the president of the University of Eastern Philippines, Dr. Cherry I. Ultra, and the presidents of the lead schools for Content Development Committee, Dr. Jude A. Duarte of Leyte Normal University, and Dr. Norberto C. Oladives of Palompon Institute of Technology. Uh, good morning also to the focal persons of the different schools who comprise the Content Development Committee. And of course, our faculty members who are tuning in three different platforms, Zoom, Facebook Live, and YouTube Live. We are now on the second day of the five-day training workshop on module production for flexible learning in higher education institutions. Before we start the program, let us be reminded once again of the video etiquette rules. Paki-request na lang, please. Hindi yung pakakahin mo, pakakahin mo. Okay, so we have uh, our video conference etiquettes. Let us be reminded once again. Of course, let us test device compatibility. So, na-test natin yan kasi nakapasok na sa Zoom ang ibang mga natin, kasama natin. And do not navigate on the screen share features. Avoid hitting the share screen button. Be on time. There will be no entry during the session. So, uh, those who will uh, enter during the session will not be approved anymore. Then, log out after the end of the session. And then, please mute our audio and video. If videos are active, let us practice this and see. And rename the profile. So some of you have already renamed their profile, but those who will be new, uh, this is the way to rename the profile. After launching the Zoom meeting, click on the participants icon at the bottom of the window. And then in the participants list of, at the right side of the Zoom window, Hover over your name and click on the rename button. And type in the display name you'd like to appear in the meeting and click on OK. So the format is the school and then uh, the name of the participant. Okay, next we have uh, proper attire, of course. Avoid distractions while we are watching the presentations. 
speak if recognized. So uh, there will be an open forum after the presentation of the speaker. Okay, so to open the program, let us feel the presence of the Almighty God as we invoke His divine providence through a prayer to be led by Dr. Geraldine P. Moncada. webinar training workshops organized for us. Help us to express our Christianity and inner devotion as we serve you and especially our students. Guide us with your wisdom so that we may become an inspiration and mirror of Christ's attitude with peaceful, modest, and sincere relationship to our fellow men. We are and honor to your son, Jesus Christ, our only Savior and Lord. Okay, to give us a recapitulation and synthesis of what happened in our day one session, particularly in the morning, may I present to you Dr. Annalisa M. Salazar. Good morning, webinar guests, focal persons, participants, and viewers from all over Region 8 of the course Modules Production for F Flexible Learning in Higher Education Institutions. The synchronous online session yesterday morning, June 11, 2020, formally started few minutes after 8 via Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. The session took off with the following preliminaries. Setting of Rules by Professor Orlando Vincolado of LNU. The prayer led by Dr. Virginia Beltran of PIT. Then the singing of the Philippine National Anthem, followed by the welcome message of Chad Commissioner, Dr. Alvin A. Darila. Then the statement of purpose emphasis emphasized by President of LNU and Chair of the Content Development Committee, Dr. Jude A. Duarte. The guests and participants were recognized by Dr. Norberto C. Olavides, PIT President and Co-Chair of the Content Development Committee. And then the Content Development Training Schedule was presented by Dr. Myrna L. Macalino, Vice President for Student Development and Auxiliary Services of LNU. Yesterday's morning session, facilitated by the Leyte Normal University, was about Ibang Klasi 4.0 from No Jules to Mojos Part 1 with Professor Jerry C. Areta from Philippine Normal University 
as resource speaker. Professor Areta started this part with a question. How will you make your class this academic year ibang klase? A different class, a different setting. Extraordinary are the terms used by our speaker in describing ibang klase 4.0 a class that will be using the superpowers of teachers to bridge the face-to-face -face or residential learning to emergency remote teaching or flexible learning. To address the situation that HEIs are facing now, Professor Areta shared his expertise by discussing the role of modules in facilitating remote learning, identifying key principles, elements, and processes in developing modules for various modalities and describing instructional models that can be used in developing modules for various modalities, all contained in the following session topics, the key considerations about our educational context and the introduction of modules as a solutions-based approach to flexible learning and emergency remote teaching. He emphasized that education sector currently is being challenged by the DVUCAD world, a disruptive, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, and diverse world. That is why our way of responding this education needs is by employing emergency remote teaching or ERT or by flexible learning FL per the directive of the Philippine government through the CHED. He highlighted that learning modules can be used to affect ERT and FL, that to be able to develop an effective module, one should keep in mind the TPAC framework, technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge, including contextual knowledge. Professor Areta ends the part one of his lecture with a quote from William Arthur Wood, which says, teaching is more than imparting knowledge, it is inspiring change. If there were 107 responses to the survey conducted by our resource speaker, basically on how ready are you for module development, there were very few questions asked in the open forum, not because participants were in a hurry to answer the attendance sheet form, but because there was power interaction. Nevertheless, everything went well and the participants were energized with a discussion of part one and are surely eager now for part two. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Annalisa Salazar for the synthesis. And before we go to our resource speaker, uh, may I have just some more reminders uh, given to us by the uh, committee. Uh, do not click the request edit access on our Google Forms attendance. Just answer the required field and that's it. Another is YouTube comment section is now activated. It's okay not to be in Zoom. We are limited to only 100 Zoom rooms, but the committee sees this as an opportunity to maximize control of the webinar flow. Don't worry, Facebook and YouTube got you covered. And now, to continue his Ibang Classing presentation, may I give the floor once again to a professor of the Philippine Normal University, Professor Jerry C. Areta. Okay, good morning. Um, Today marks my second day of my talk, that's Ibang Klase 4.0, From No Jewels to Modules. Okay, so this is a webinar uh, hosted by the EVHEIs, FLMSC. Okay. Um, I welcome everyone to my talk, but before we proceed, I would like to greet um, everyone. Sorry, yeah. Uh, to greet everyone, happy 122nd commemoration of our Philippine Independence Day. Okay, so our top, our team is Tungo sa Bansang Malaya, Nagbabayanihan at 
tests towards a free, united, and safe nation. Okay. So as a recap for my part two of the talk, um, let me go back to my session targets, explain the role of modules in facilitating remote learning, identify key principles, elements, and processes in developing modules for various modalities, select appropriate instructional model to guide in the development of learning modules, and exhibit competence in crafting module exemplars following the key considerations discussed. Um, today's talk will center on the following session topics. The first is the key principles that support learning through modules and learning packets. And the second one is the nitty gritty of developing modules, more on the instructional design. Okay, so whenever we have um, to create, to develop an instructional material, we have to have a certain process in mind. And that is where instructional design will come in. So the instructional design is very important. No matter if you're going to create a module, an instructional material, or lesson plan, for example, you have to follow a certain process to make it more effective, to make it more efficient. Okay. Um, instructional design. So what is instructional design? So design was defined by Merriam Webster as to create, fashion, execute, or construct according to plan. So plan is very important. Okay, so there is an adage that if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Another one, another definition is to conceive and plan out in the mind. So it's more of um, an ideal. Okay, and planning is, uh, since it's an ideal, you have to create something to become it in terms of a realistic one, okay? You don't have to stick only to the plan. After planning, when you are deciding, you are making it in a realistic way. Number three, to have a purpose, to intend. So that's part of the design. Fourth, to devise for a specific function or end. So you remember the idea of um, an instructional design that you you start with the end in mind or you begin with the end in mind, okay? That's part of McTice and Wiggins uh, understanding by design. So thus, instructional designing, we do deliver purpose planning for our instruction. So it's very important. Why do we need to do this? That's one of the questions we have to answer. It is because we ensure that all parts of our lesson have continuity. So the major parts are aligned with the target learning outcome and somehow approximate efficiency and make our instruction effective as possible. Okay, so let me take you to another activity. Um, go to www.menti.com and use the code 59-9338. Okay. Let me access first the Mentimeter. Okay. Percent.
Okay. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a word cloud and the more words you enter, um, for example, here, the bigger the, the word is, the more uh, people who actually entered that, uh, that word. And here we have those in bigger font, we have interactive, plan, learning, strategy. So these are the four big words. So we have here simple, okay, understandable, curriculum, comprehensive, instructional materials, learning outcomes, Okay, we have create, clear. Okay, so we have 89 who responded, 90 who responded to this. Okay. So when it comes to instructional design um, from the audience, okay, so we have the following key terms, basically more on strategy learning, plan, interactive, and comprehensive. Okay, good. So keep them coming. Um, we'll share it again uh, after my first uh, first part of the talk of the talk today. Okay. Okay, let's move on to my next slide. Um, instructional design, or ID, is defined by Sills and Ricci as an organized procedure that includes the steps of analyzing, designing, developing, implementing, and evaluating instruction. So the said processes make up the core elements of the ID. So when it comes to instructional designing, you have to keep in mind these five steps because these are the core elements. Analysis typically includes understanding the needs and the learners themselves, including why a training or learning solution, or in our case, a module is required. It may be the case that training is not the solution and some other type of performance improvement or non-training solution will be recommended upon going through the analysis. In this stage, you'll also begin to develop the goals of the training, including learning objectives, and determine how the training will be delivered. So that's part of the analysis. So yesterday's part of my talk is somehow more on the contextual analysis. We had to explore on the context of education the DeBucad, and the other, like ERT, like flexible learning, that is an imperative for us. Design and development includes the actual design and development of the instructional materials or determining the delivery methods to be used. It often includes drafting curriculum, lesson plans, or the learning module, um, developing any instructional materials, including presentations, uh, migrating your plan into the LMS or the learning man management system, the job aids, participant guides, study guides as well, and anything else to be used in the training. So actually, um, this uh, one week training Okay, because we have uh, 
next week for another set of uh, resource persons. Um, actually, it's part of more on the analysis part na. Kasi parang kinocontextualize natin anong ang kailangan natin para makapag-create talaga ng module. Okay? So after uh, next week ng mga webinars, doon napapasok yung actual na ano niya eh, designing and development. Okay? That's part of the uh, more on the institutional na na pag-uusap yan. So doon yung nagagawin itong design and actual development. Actually, meron kayong two-week break to develop the the module. You have to deliver the module. Okay? Um, evaluation looks at how you determine if your training or learning solution was successful. Did it create a measurable impact on the learner's behavior? And did that lead to the desired results back on the job? Um, in terms of evaluation, uh, medyo ma maikli lang yung oras natin no? na para mag-develop talaga. Um, when we evaluate what we have developed, madalas ang nangyayari na lang muna ay ano, no? um, experts validation. Okay? At bukod doon, syempre dumadaan din yan sa ibang mga pamamaraan tulad ng language editing. So that's very important na ano, uh, part na evaluation. Pero kung may time, pwede rin naman siyang i-pilot test. Okay? I-pilot test sa mga target participants natin. Pero since ilang ano na lang, no? parang ilang, ang bilis ng panahon, June na, tapos July, tapos August, magsisimula na ang ang academic year. Parang kapag nag-pilot test pa tayo, medyo mas matatagalan tayo. Eh, no? So, yan. Pero, um, I think, yung, yung plan natin na um, content language editing, okay na rin siya. Okay? Uh, pasensya na, medyo umuulan ngayon dito sa, sa Pampanga. No? Yan. Let's move on to the concerns of the instructional design. So what's the main concern of designing our instruction? So instruction design can serve as a frame of reference and a regulation of the development of courses and lessons aiming at, number one, the improvement of learning. Okay? So we have to improve the student learning because of uh, the context. One way of delivering our instruction is through flexible learning, ERT, the use of modules. So the end product should be learning. Okay? And influencing the learner's motivation and attitudes in such a way that they can achieve a deep understanding of the subject matters to be learned. Okay? So, influence on the motivation and attitude. So, the central concept of ID or the instructional design is to affect learning and teaching. So, moreover, ID is primarily concerned with the generation of a detailed and precise prescriptions for the development implementation, evaluation, and maintenance of situations that aim to the initiation and facilitation of learning processes within our subject areas. Okay, so the main concern of the instructional design of our module is to affect learning and teaching. Okay. Um, how about the perspectives of the instructional design? Instructional design takes into consideration the theories from sciences and technolo technology. Okay? So these are the bases that guide the instructional design process. In terms of the scientific theories, scientific theories provide a basis for the description, explanation, and prediction of particular issues. So we include here the learning theories that covers our pedagogical knowledge. 
Okay, so that's why we have to go back to the TPAC. Okay, the TPAC is our asset. So when it comes to designing our instruction, we are informed by the different scientific theories on how to, to deliver, on how to plan out our instruction. The second one is more on the technological theories. It provides a fundamental basis for the exploitation of rules. So, lagi meron tayong susundan, no? Kapag nagsusulat tayo, nagkikreate tayo, nagdi-design tayo ng ating instruction, ng ating module, meron particular na rule na kailangan nating balikan. Paano isusulat? Paano gagawin? Okay? Aiming at the optimization of practical actions, so more on praxis, which on the other hand covers our technological knowledge. Okay? How about the, the content knowledge? Siyempre, mas mahalaga sa isang writer na siya ay isang subject uh, specialist. Okay? So isa siyang content specialist. Kasi mahirap nga naman na magsulat ng wala kang particular na content in mind. So, these perspectives are equally important in developing our instructional design in general and modules in particular. So, lagi natin babalikan ito. Okay? Mamaya meron pa tayong ano nito, ano? Um, medyo mas palalawakin natin. Ano yung ilang mga... Uh, scientific theories to learning and development na pwede nating tingnan, basahin, at i-consider. Okay. So, instructional designers. Tayo as instructional designers. Remember, um, ang mga teachers, tinatawag din natin silang mga curriculum planners. Okay? So, bukod sa curriculum implementers, curriculum planners din tayo. We design the curriculum. We design kung anong dapat na matutunan ng bata. Okay? So yesterday, in a simple survey, I asked the participants to answer. There are some who are intrigued of the roles of instructional designers. So ito yun. Ito. So ito yung ilan sa mga many roles of instructional designers. So to be able to define the various roles of instructional designers, we should be clear about the meaning of design. So design can be defined as in due form. And there should be a functional representation of any commodity or object of utility na gagamit ang ating in, uh, design instruction. So we have to distinguish between, number one, design as draft, as plan or blueprint, and two, design as forming, composing, and modeling of an object of utility. So meaning, design is both a process and product. So hindi pwedeng process lang siya. Hindi pwedeng product lang siya. Kasi parehas sila when you are uh, creating your instructional design. So design primarily can be considered as a comprehensive process of forming composing, and modeling that presupposes multiple working steps dami, no? carried out by several people. So the process of design entails a particular product that has to serve the specific interest of a particular target group. So yan. So kasama yun no? sa dinidesign natin. So ano-ano nga ba yung mga rules natin na nakalagay dyan. So we as a module writers must consider the following rules to be clear about our job description. So ito yung job description mo. Okay? Dahil gagawa ka ng module, ito yung mga dapat mong alalahanin. Ito yung dapat uh, mga gagawin mo. No? Number one, as a trainer. So we provide resources and training on course design tools and technology. So that's part of our roles as trainer. We train also the, the end users. Okay? So, imagine yung paggawa natin ng module. Para siyang paggawa rin ng mga guide, instructional guide. Okay? 
para magamit ng maayos yung dinisay nating module. Two, although ito ay medyo ano ano, as superheroes, we could we become a media producer, a collaboration expert, and many other great things. Okay? As consultants, we consult other content experts. That's why uh, we have yung ano ano, uh, we have to build the, the community of ano, collaboration, the community of sharing, so yeah, the culture of sharing, the culture of collaboration. Um, we consult other content experts on pedagogy, pedagogy, sorry, and other instructional strategies to be included in our modules. Sometimes, magaling tayo sa content. Okay? Pero, kulang tayo sa pedagogical. Okay yun, no? So, kailangan din nating um, magtanong sa iba. Kasi nga, um, this is especially essential today because no one has a monopoly of knowledge. Okay? Kahit na ikaw ay ma marami ka nang na-design na, na modules like me. May mga modules na rin ako nagawa. Pero each time na may nakikita akong bago, bagong pamamaraan, I learn. Okay? I take the opportunity to learn kung paano nila ginagawa. At magandang ano yan, no? characteristics na dapat natin makuha. Okay? Hindi porkit marami na rin tayong mga nagawang modules, ay we stick on that. May mga, pabab, ano, no? May mga transcending na mga pamamaraan. As explorers, we explore and access emerging researches and tools to promote active learning and engagement. Yan. So we have to explore. Ang, ang maganda ngayon sa ano natin, yung internet is a powerful tool. Very powerful siya, no? Dahil, um, biduin mo, nasa bahay lang tayo, pero hindi tayo pumupunta ng library. Nag-browse lang tayo sa internet at marami tayong pwedeng basahin. Okay? So that's the power of the, the technology. Okay? It brings information to us na hindi kailangan ng sobrang daming effort. Although, ang problema rin ngayon, when we access uh, different content, kailangan alam natin which ones are, syempre, may fake news. Okay? So, kailangan critical din tayo. So, that's very important, no? yung critical reading na tinatawag. As designers, so isa pang role natin, we design engaging and meaningful learning experiences. So, at the heart of the matter is often yung uh, sa OBE, remember, yung alignment of our learning outcomes to the strategies and the assessment. Dapat align sila. So, kapag nag-design ka ng module, balikan mo lahat yon. Kailangan align yung uh, sinet mong learning outcomes or pwedeng uh, yung sinet ng, ng institution na learning outcomes. Tapos, mula dun sa learning outcomes, um, dun papasok naman yung mga activities na pwede mong gawin uh, at ipagawa sa mga bata. At yung assessment, which is also in line with what you have planned for the activities and also, more importantly, sa learning outcomes. As a relationship builder, we are skilled at building relationships and rapport with other stakeholders, nurturing the culture of sharing and professional collaboration. So, hindi lang, ano, no? hindi lang ito sa, sa co-faculty natin. Okay? Um, it transcends our institution dahil nga, dun, uh, we have the consortium. We also collaborate, we build on rapport with our end users. Okay? As evaluators, we design, develop, and evaluate content and instructional materials. As communicators, we collaborate with faculty to ensure course content is communicated clearly and uh, clearly and uh, succinctly. As project managers, we talk about projects and project management constantly. It frames how we think about the work, okay, project manager. So 
we tend to have our modules as a project na ginagawa natin. Another one, as thinkers, we brainstorm, we experiment, we look for new and better all the time. We think about human psychology, we think about aesthetics, syempre magdi-design tayo, dapat maganda siya, dapat as much as possible makulay kung kakayanin, um, may kulay, okay? Kasi it adds motivation, eh, no? Um, we think about the design, the user experience, syempre uh, kailangan kapag nag nagko-construct ka ng module, isipin mo rin yung mga gagamit. Kasi hindi lang ikaw yung gagamit eh, no? Hindi lang hindi para sa iyo, para sa mga bata. Uh, we think about the flow, the look, the feel. So yeah, no? We think about the different senses and how they come into play. We think about differentiation. We think about the activities. Are they engaging? Diba? Will me or will the module will the activities in in our module make our learners active so we have the active learning um, as data analyst we should make data based decision making okay so very important ngayon yung analytics and lastly as builders so we bring a systematic approach to constructing learning experiences that includes analysis of the audience. We also analyze the environment. We keep in mind the objectives, the content, technologies, etc. So because there are nuances. So for example, in, in a certain content. So iba rin ang delivery ng science, ng math, social science, okay? So, may mga nuances sila na kailangan i-include natin doon sa, um, sa technology. So, alam niya ng mga, ano, no, ng mga content experts yung mga nuances. So, planning maps, kasama rin dyan. Guides, templates, process, documents, outlines, storyboard. Okay? Actually, as an instructional designer, we are a storyteller. Kasi dapat magkakaugnay, may continuity kapag nagagawa tayo ng, uh, ng ating instructional design, ng ating module. Okay? So that's part of ano, no? the different roles of instructional designers. However, there are transcending roles of instructional designers. Lalo na ngayon. Diba? Sabi nga natin, we have the debukad world chaotic, changing, okay? rapid ang changes. So in addition to the numerous roles I have mentioned, there are three new roles of instructional designers according to Dr. Casper Spiro, uh, CEO of EC Generator and author of e-learning industry. Spiro authored the Employee Generated Learning or what we call the EGL claiming the content is increasingly likely to be user-generated or curated. Okay? User-generated or curated. Um, many, um, many people have their accounts on, as bloggers. Diba? Ang tawag natin sa bloggers kaya. Hindi, hindi lang bloggers. Eh. Content developers. Okay? So this approach to learning is a silent yet fast-paced and organic revolution that is disrupting the conventional top-down learning approach. So when we are uh, designing our instruction, dati, kung sino lang yung mga magagaling, sila lang nagagawa ng content. Pero dahil nga bago, sa, bago sa panahon ngayon, ang mga content ay ginagawa rin ng mga sudyante. Ginagawa rin ng ibang mga hindi lang tayo, no? Ibang mga individuals, we might as well use the power of this curated or user-generated na mga content. 
Okay? So fundamentally, the approach means giving subject matter experts the power to create and maintain learning content on topics in which they are experts. It harnesses their expertise and enables them to share it with the colleagues. So more on um, this EGL, na tinatawag natin, the Employee Generated Learning, ay um, ang maganda dito yung pag-harness ng expertise ng mga subject uh, subject matter experts natin and to be able to share it with others. Okay? Kasi ngayon, because of the the, the, the role of the internet now, hindi lang siya yung paghahanap ka ng content binibigay lang ng Google, no? So you can also um, post blogs, di ba? So the, those are part of the content. You can create articles. Ayan. Um, actually, this is a uh, part of the, ano, no? Yung wikis, if you are familiar with. Yung wikis ng, ng klase, pwede magkaroon ng wikis ng, ng ano, ng klase. Um, isa sa mga um, na yung sa ODL namin, na online distance learning, isa sa magandang nakita ko dun sa UPOU, Open University, ay yung ano, ano, um, pagdadagdag ng glossary terms. Okay? Somehow, um, it keeps the, the audience, the users, na makapag-share ng kanilang nalalaman. Okay? They can include. However, kung meron silang nakuha, dapat ituro rin natin paano yung proper citation. Okay? So that's part of ano, no? how we learn now in the 21st century. So this is a resounding rationale why we are generating modules by means of creating a culture of sharing and collaboration. Okay? The second... Um, Role, according to Spiro, is managing role. Yan. So it ensures the quality of courses created. So as an instructional designer, you manage the man roles. Uh, may managing role ka. So the instructional designer's strength lies in the deep understanding of how to transfer knowledge effectively. Kaya hindi pwedeng mawala ang instructional designers. Maraming mga nag na gagawa, nag-create, nag-develop ng kanilang content. Pero, kailangan natin piliin. So, kasama yun sa ano natin, no, instructional, as an instructional designer. Piliin natin yung mga content na isasama natin. And the third one is the coaching role. Oversees and guides the course creators regarding appropriate course creation. He fulfills the role of facilitator rather than the role of content creator alone. Okay, so we can uh, coach other uh, content creators, content developers, as part of being an instructional designer. Okay, how to effectively deliver their courses or their course, um, their content that they have developed. Okay. There are certain strategies for developing suitable learning environments. So, when we are creating modules, module is part of the learning environment. Ito yung kung saan sila matututo. Okay? So, the major intention of IT or instructional design is the development of learning environments on the basis of suitable theories of learning and theories that ensure the quality of teaching and educational interventions. So different strategies are applied to instructional design. So we have an organizational strategy. Okay. Ano yung mga organizational strategies? Organizational strategies are concerned with both the gross and detailed planning of setting of teaching and learning in order to determine how a course or lesson should be arranged and sequenced. Okay. So tayo, babalikan ulit natin. When we plan our module, babalikan natin yung ating syllabus. Okay? Kasi may mga approved na yan. Eh, no? uh, approved yung syllabus. Tapos, from our syllabus, itatransform natin into learning packets. Okay? So, 
may may organization then in terms of the process. Remember yesterday we have the objectives going to selection of activities, then going to evaluation. So yung organizational strategies dun siya sa pangalawa. Sa gitna. When we select different activities. So you have to do an organization. Okay? Another one is the delivery strategies. Okay? Pag nagsulat tayo, kasama rin ang delivery na pinaplano. Concerned with decisions on how information can be transmitted to the target group of learners. Okay? Meron yan actually na sinusunod din. No? May mga principles na uh, ang magandang nakita ko dito yung brain-based approach. When we organize and when we deliver, ito yung lagi kong sinasabi, that it should be a bite-sized you put it into chunks. Hindi pwedeng isang bagsakan lang. That's why we create modules into units, into learning packets na tinatawag. The third one is execution. Execution strategies concerned with decisions on methods to assist the learner to deal effectively with instructional materials. Okay? So these are the three uh, strategies for developing suitable learning environments, organizational, delivery, and also execution. Okay. So, dun pa rin tayo sa, sa, ano, no? sa ID, sa instructional design, kung saan nandun yung from analysis going to evaluation. So, kailangan, um, after the analysis, yung apat na natira, you keep in mind kapag nagsulat tayo ng module. Okay? Kasi kapag nagsusulat ka, kailangan nandun ka rin sa shoes ng mag implement Nandun ka rin sa shoes ng gagamit. Okay? So, hindi ka lang writer, kumbaga. Okay? You'll take, uh, you'll have to wear different hats. Okay? So, here, how to be a successful instructional designer. So, there are certain tips. Um, number one is to simplify. Uh, sir Aretha, yes, I'm sorry, sorry for the interruption. Um, okay. The presentations po are not clear. I mean, the slide presentations po hindi po mabasa yung iba. Baka po okay. pwede ma-change sa settings po, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I don't know kung paano yung setting niya. Okay. Uh, sir Neil, Uh, please help. Paano po ba iayos yung ano? I think, sir, yung parang image yata yan, sir, no? Yes, yes. Uh, pixelized lang talaga siya. Mm -mm. Yung na-download mo siya, pixelized talaga. So, we cannot uh, change na po yung setting niya. Okay. Sige. However, I think yung consortium naman ay magbibigay rin ng, ano, ano, ng copy. Yes po, sir. So, we will just provide the copy to the participants. Thank you, sir. Okay, sige. Pasensya na. Um, sige, i-explain ko na lang rin yung iba. So, number one dyan is simplify the content. Okay, simplify the content. That's the violet one. So, in a module or learning packets, it is essential that we, that we have to break the content into chewable units. We have to simplify. More so, we also follow the principle less is more. Okay? Hindi porkit parang ano lang siya, isang sentence lang siya, ay baliwala. Okay? So, we have to follow, follow the principle less is more. This is why we need to do the first process of instructional design, which is analysis. Okay? To be able to simplify the content. The second one, yung green. Design from a learner's point of view. This actually helps in making an effective module which is to consider our learner's general characteristic. Sinong gagamit? Okay. Anong karakteristik ng gagamit? Um, the use of highly technical language, for example, must be minimized if not filtered. 
So, kailangan, as much as possible, um, madaling intindihin ng particular na individual. Parang nagkukwento ka lang dito. Okay? So, the material will be put into test once target learners access your module. If they seem to go over the module easily, then there will be less guidance. Diba? Kasi ang learning packets, ang module for example, ay wala ka naman doon physically to explain the content of the module, to explain your instructions. Okay? That's why you have to clearly na ilagay ang instruction mo as much as possible, as simple as possible. Yan. Um, if they seem to go over yan, and they can focus on achieving the learning outcomes more. So kapag simple, kapag easy to understand, mas nakakapag-focus sila sa learning outcomes kaysa mag-define lang ng mga terms na gagamitin natin. So in other words, oh, um, paano naman yun kung may mga technical words? Lagyan natin sa module natin ng unlocking of difficulties. So you have to define. Pwede ka maglagay ng side note. Okay? May binanggit ka na technical term. Kasi minsan, hindi natin maiwasan eh. Lalo na kapag higher education institution. No? Uh, kasi highly te technical din naman yung mga subjects natin madalas. So kailangan mo siyang ilagay yung definition pwedeng sa side notes. Okay? Naka-marginal note. Yan. So, uh, in other words, we must clearly present the module to students in a way they can understand. So that's the second, the green one. Design from a learner's point of view. The third one, yung blue, make your learning experience fun and engaging. Ito yung isa sa mga tanong kahapon. Eh, no? This is easier said than done. This is easier said than done. Sinabi ko na fun and engaging. E eh, paano pag yung, ano, yung ibang mga bata, no? Mag maganda yung activity mo sa iba. Sa iba naman, underappreciated siya. Okay? So maraming mga ganyan. Um, well, kung ito naman ay nakikita mo na essential para sa pag-attain uh, ng objective mo, then you can also include. Ang isa sa mga magagandang uh, sa module is that um, pwede nating lagyan ng alternative activities. May optional activities tayo na pwedeng ilagay. Okay? May option ang bata. So, kailangan tingnan mo rin yung differentiation. So, we can be guided by the following regarding sa ano, no? making the learning experiences fun and engaging. Number one, we must connect learning to real life. Okay? Connecting your uh, the learning experiences, the activities that you are planning to include to real life situation. Okay? So a classic question ng mga sugyante natin, Sir or ma'am, how can I use this in real life? Of course, it is a valid concern. We should include in our module some practical application. Okay? Dapat nakikita na practicality ng mga activities natin. Paano pa? Engaging all kinds of intelligences. There should be variety of activities. But, remember, hindi lang dapat meaningfulness, no? There should also an element of challenge. Okay? At the same time, it is challenging for them. But not to the point na very difficult. Kasi yung motivation then. No? Um, the third one, know some trends in what your learners are doing and think of ways of embedding it in your module. Kasi marami na rin ngayon na um, ginagawa yung ilang mga sudyante natin, no? mga extracurricular nila. So, might as well, you include certain activities na nare-realize sila, pwede pala. Halimbawa, Mobile Legends. Okay? Although, 
talaga naman kahit across ano yan eh, across ages mobile legends pero ano bang pwede nating gamitin sa mobile legends na topic halimbawa strategies yan so pwede yan no um, integrate technology into learning so even textbooks now are upgrading their content okay so may mga nakikita rin tayo mga textbooks lalo sa mga K to 12 um, grade levels na merong mga codes Okay, including some codes. Kahit printed ang module mo, pwede mong lagyan ng code uh, kung sakaling meron silang phone, may internet, they can scan the code. Tapos pwede yung code na yon ay mapunta sila into a certain virtual or augmented reality. Even us, kahit mga matatanda na rin tayo, ay nafafascinate din tayo dito sa mga augmented realities. Okay? or virtual realities. So, might as well include it. Kasi that will make it more fun and engaging for them, yung activities natin. So, there are so many ways that we can choose from. So, learning is fun if done correctly. Okay? So, yung red is keep innovating. The area of data analytic, analytics is a promising way of pushing for innovations in our instruction. Be inspired with the problems or crisis we encounter. Okay? Like this. Uh, yung ano natin, no? Um, yung context natin ngayon. Yung health crisis natin. Pwede. We can include certain reflections. Uh, reflection is a key to innovation. Okay? In addition, the best way to start innovating according to Satel in his article in Forbes, is to ask the right question. Ito yung pinakauna, eh, no? We have to, uh, to teach our learners to ask, to ask the right question. So, questions such as, how well is the problem defined? How well is the domain defined? There is no one method to become innovative. But if you look at the different institutions, okay, tulad sa mga schools, yung innovation sila. Bakit ang tanda na ng institution pero hanggang ngayon ay stand strong pa rin sila, no? Yan. Because one thing is common, they applied a portfolio of strategies. Okay? The orange one is be tech savvy. Okay? Medyo kahapon, may question regarding dun sa mga how do we support faculties na ano no, na hindi naman ganun ka-tech savvy. Kasi pag sinabi natin tech savvy, parang ang nagiging issue sa individuals ay paano yun kung ako ay low-tech? May idea ng low-tech and high-tech. Um, going through an online search, I find, according to Oxford Dictionary, a tech-savvy person is someone who is well-informed about the modern technology. Yeah, well-informed, and also uses his or her skills in order to take advantage of the current technology. So with this, I remember a question yesterday. And I guess this was emphasized yesterday that part of the rationale Bakit nag-create tayo ng consortium? Bakit kayo nag-create ng consortium dyan? Is to assist the faculty in capacity building and upskilling. Okay? Kaya, um, for for those people na sinasabi nila, ay hindi ako tech savvy or may idea rin, even me, um, I learn more when I use the, the, the devices, when I use internet. So, very important yung exploration. Okay? So, kailangan i-explore pa rin natin. Uh, may, may eagerness tayo for exploration. So, those are part of how to be a successful instructional designer. Part pa lang yan. Marami pang pwedeng tips. Okay? Marami pa yan. Um, as we go along. Um... What are the latest trends that impact and influence instructional designers? Number one, 
instructional design, yung research insights into the science of learning. No? When designers get insights into how people learn, that's why we have the brain-based learning. Actually, um, parang last last ano lang no last week lang I came across with sold. Ano yung sold? It's a uh, science of learning and uh, discovery. Parang ganun ang idea. So that's uh, that's a good idea of browsing through certain researches. And ID should focus on understanding the schema of the learner of learners, the series of structures that enable them to solve problems and think. Number one. Number two is personalization of learning. So instructional design will continue to take advantage of big data to personalize learning experiences by getting better insights into learner engagement. Okay? So mas napapersonalize natin yung learning mas nag -e engage ang bata. Kasi nakikita ng bata yung design mo ng yung instruction na para sa kanya. That's why it's being personalized. Learning can be designed to cater to individual needs and requirements. Okay? So number three is creating pool rather than the push resources for adults. Okay? With personalization in mind, Instructional design will move toward offering learners the flexibility to learn what they want. This is suited to the modern workplace where employees search for knowledge applicable to their needs and is contextualized. Kasi nga, um, remember yung kahapon regarding sa mga competencies natin, saan nga ba, uh, ano nga ba yung Ano nga ba yung mga nag inform para iset natin yung competencies ng ating graduates? One is yung need ng industries natin. Okay? So, very very important din, din yung pagsagot dun sa needs ng mga industries after a student graduates from our institution. Number four is mobile learning. Delivering uh, mobile-compatible nano learning modules will help learners access learning anytime and anywhere with greater flexibility. Okay? So, in terms of this, remember the learning management system, lalo sa mga mag, ano, no, uh, magkakaroon ng online instruction, maganda rin na accessible ang ating modules Hindi lang pag sila ay gumagamit ng desktop or ng laptop, kundi pag gumagamit din sila ng mobile devices. Kasi they can bring it anywhere, anytime. So ito yung ilan sa mga latest trends that impact and influence instructional designers. However, um, when we design, minsan, yung sabi nga nila, no, masyadong ginagalingan kapag gumagawa ng module. Okay? Masyadong ginalingan. Bakit? Eh kasi, um, minsan we are prone to certain common mistakes okay, that we often do in our instructional design. Number one, yung kulay green dyan. No? Uh, teal pala, teal. Too much on-screen or on-page text. O, paggawa ng module, huwag naman natin punuin yung screen or yung text sa isang page. A page, slide, or screen with a lot of text overwhelms the user and reduces the chances of retaining the information. Less is more. And do a bite-sized approach to designing your module. Okay? Bite size lang siya. Tapos yung principle niya ng less is more. Um, number two, yung green, incorrectly chosen assets. 
Ano nga ba yung mga assets na nilalagay natin sa ating design? Mga multimedia, an incorrect audio, image, or any other media sometimes mislead the users. So, kailangan we choose appropriately yung mga assets, yung mga multimedia na nilalagay natin sa ating presentation. Number three, a cluttered screen. Layout. Okay? That's why kailangan din natin ng mga layout artist. Maring ikaw yung nag-design ng instructional design mo. Ikaw nagsulat ng module mo. Pero merong elements din ng layouting na minsan na-overlook natin. So a poor layout might confuse learners instead of creating an impact for learning. Okay? So kailangan i-consider natin yon. Halimbawa, font style, font size, even margins. Yan, di ba? Margin ng ano, layouting. Number four, animation for the sake of animation. Okay? So the inclusion of elements should be chosen appropriately. There should be a clear purpose. O, yan yung ano natin, no? Dapat pag naglagay tayo, ng anything, animation for example, may purpose tayo for that animation. Hindi para lang mapaganda. Eh, bukod dun. Diba? More on learning and teaching ang focus natin sa instructional design. Eh, diba? And number five is lack of fluidity. Ensure that the topics flow smoothly from one to another. It should include a continuative process from setting of goals towards the assessment strategies. Okay. Okay. Do you have certain questions um, for now? Okay pa po ba? Yes, sir. I yes. think okay pa. Okay pa po. Okay. Sige po. Um... Sige, let's move on dun sa um, five different types of instructional design models. Sa five designs of uh, instructional design model, may maraming mga libro regarding sa educational technology okay? um, that caters to this instructional model. Um, pag binasa mo siya, kasi maraming mga, ano yan, mga nag-author. Nung nakahanap ako ng isang libro, nung, hin nung binrouse ko, overwhelming. Why? Kasi ang dami na pala ngayon na mga instructional models. Okay? Ang dami na ngayon. Um, in this presentation, yung nakalagay dyan, I will pick, na isasama ko sa presentation, yung one and three. Kasi ito yung madalas na ginagamit. Even textbook writers, mga publishing houses, ito yung ginagamit madalas. Okay? Lalo na yung nasa gitna, yung, nine, yung number three. Yung Ganyes, Nine Events of Instruction. Okay? Mamaya makikita natin bakit, bakit, bakit ito ang madalas gamitin. Okay? Even... Uh, may mga nakita akong mga modules na gawa sa dep ng DepEd. Okay? Nakabatay rin dito sa nine events of instructional model. Okay? But however, sa institution, sa institution namin, sa PNU, yung ginawa namin mga module, uh, ako, doon sa DOLET, sa DOST, meron kaming sariling model na, gina na ginamit. Okay? And I will share it with you today. Um, yeah. So it is important to note that the first generation instructional design models center on seven basic questions. Ano ano yon? Chapter we have who. Si no, yan. Yung target group of learners. Okay. Si no ang gagamit ng mga modules. Sino ang gagamit ng module na gawa mo? Diba? Particularly for us, HEIs, kung sino yung mga students natin, yun ang target natin. 
that's why that's one of the questions no? who number two what anong content ang ilalagay ko okay to be taught or learned isang question kahapon is katulad po ba ng DepEd pwede po ba nating uh, magkakaroon din po ba ng MELKs or most essential learning competencies well sa DepEd meron MELKs sa atin kasi institution wise meron tayong mga syllabus na approve ng BOR at mahirap din na i gumawa ng ano nang nang bago agad-agad so yun yung basis tingnan niyo yung learning outcomes okay what for para saan instructional goals and learning objectives okay why this is more of the accountability that's why we need yung needs analysis okay bakit ko kailangan gumawa ng module kasi kailangan natin ng options kung hindi kaya ng online fully online dapat may print okay pag nag online ka naman isa sa pwedeng gawin ay yung module maging modular approach yung ating online delivery okay para mas mabilis mas madali hindi lang para sa atin as faculty para mas madali rin para sa mga estudyante how instructional strategies and methods ano yung mga i-include ko sa paggawa nito Okay? When? Timeline of instruction. Diba? Um, madalas sa atin, sa isang course, nasa 51 to 54 hours ang target natin. So, kailangan um, yung ating gagawing module naka, naka-based dun sa time allotment natin. Okay? For example, for, for us, meron kaming 12 weeks. Okay? Yung 12 weeks na yun, kailangan, uh, in terms of instruction, may, we have 4.5 hours a week ng instruction. Tapos, nakaspread going to 12 weeks. Ayan. So, 54 hours dapat siya. So, kasama yun, no? when, timeline of instruction. So, kapag gumawa ka, weekly, for example, kailangan yung magagawa ng bata in a module in a certain week, ay hanggang 4.5 hours lang. In our example, ha? Uh, 4.5 hours. Okay? That includes synchronous and asynchronous. Okay? Um, tsaka, weekly basis siya pag modular. Mas maganda kung ang distribution ng topics ay <clears throat> uniform. Kumbaga, ang ano niya, ang timeline niya is per week ang module. Kaysa yung isang, although mag-base pa rin tayo sa topics, eh, no? pero kasi yung topics in terms of unit, mas maganda kung unit ay nakaayos into a uniform. Uniform siya. Per week, ito yung magagawa nila. Okay? And we have where? The venue of the learning environment. Kaya alam mo dapat kung ito ay print, kung ito ay i-upload sa LMS kasi may mga features ng LMS na pwedeng gamitin na rin eh for activities. Okay? So there is an important input for us in designing our modules. So this is an important input. Yung pitong questions. Okay. Oh, let's start with the ADI model. So what is ADI? The ADI model. ADI stands for analysis. Design, development, I for implementation, and E for evaluation. Okay? So, yung ADI model na yan was developed by Florida State University within the realm of military training. Okay? So, uh, ADI model was considered as an umbrella term. Why? You remember the core elements of instructional design? Ito rin yun. Okay? Similar ang kanilang structure. Okay? So, ito muna tayo sa analysis. Okay? Before we start yung developing ng module natin, the ADI model 
states, you should first analyze the current situation, the context. Basically, get a clear picture of where everything is currently to understand the gaps you need to fill. So yeah, identification of gaps. A quality analysis helps identify learning goals and objectives. It also helps gather information about what your audience already knows and what they still need to learn. How do you perform a good analysis? Then ask you seven questions. Okay. So what's our output in this letter A, in this analysis? At the end of the analysis phase, you should have a plan for your e-learning or your module and know your training needs. So that's why we need to have A, analysis. We have D, the second process, D, or the second phase. In the design phase, we view all the information from the analysis phase and make informed decision about creating and learning program. So be aware, this phase is often time intensive sa designing. Uh, um, it is time intensive. Hindi naman siya time consuming, pero it takes a lot of time and requires attention to detail. The design phase helps us decide specific learning objectives, the structure of the content, the mental processes needed by participants, the KSA, or we also include V, it's KS, KSAV, the knowledge, the skills, the attitude, and values okay, of participants need to retain, the best tools to use, videos or graphics to create, or what we call the toolkit, the length of time for each lesson. So yan yung mga kasama sa mga elements ng design natin. No? Um, these are some of the few elements, the essentials. So in a nutshell, this is where all your expertise as an instructional designer comes into play. Okay? So dito ka nagagawa ng storyboard. So yun yung output for the design. Kailangan may storyboard ka na paano mo gagawin yung module mo after the design. Next is the development. Okay, development. Um, of course, you got your analysis. May design ka na. Now is the time to start building. So the development phase is where you actually begin creating or developing your module. In the previous design phase, the content idea should have already been decided. Okay. For development phase, it is to bring those content ideas to life. This means layouting the content visually, creating graphics, recording videos, carefully selecting fonts and colors, building the course in the e-learning authoring tool or the module anything that has to do with creating the actual end product of your learners. Okay. So actually, ginagamit din natin itong ADI model when it comes to creating your presentation. Huh? Sa presentation kasi, hindi ka pwedeng basta-basta na lang maglagay ng presentation sa, sa PowerPoint. Kailangan meron ka something in mind. That's the design. Okay. The design is based on ano nga bang kailangan doon sa training. So then, doon papasok yung analysis. Okay? When it comes to development, doon mo na ilalagay lahat ng mga elements, even the multimedia na kailangan mong ilagay. Okay? So that's, that's part of the development. So ano ang output na kailangan natin at the end of this development phase? You should have your entire module completed. Okay? So at the end, that's the output. Dapat may module ka na na as much as possible, nakita mo na feeling mo okay na, maganda. Okay? Magiging effective. Pero it doesn't mean na you feel na parang effective, magiging effective talaga. Kasi kailangan mo muna yan, number four, which is implementation. So, your module has been created. 
tested and approved. Yan. Kasi doon sa development, kailangan ipatest din. No? Kailangan malaman din ng mga content experts. Dumaan ba yan sa, sa scrutiny ng content experts ng ating language editors? Yan. Now, it's time for your learners to take the course. Most often, in the world of, of uh, e-learning or when we are teaching, this means exporting your file and uploading the course to the LMS, the Learning Management System. And during the export process, make sure you work with your client. Okay? Kailangan may supervision sa user, sa end users, yung ating mga sigyante. So the output for this uh, process, number four, implementation, is available in the LMS for users to begin completing. So yung actual na paggamit na nila, okay, ng mga bata. So the last phase ng ADI model is evaluation. Okay? After the, the, the course, the module is designed, developed, and implemented, you want to make sure it's doing its job. Is the the, the module at, uh, effective? Are your learners confused? So, it, ilan yan sa mga question na, ano, no, na pwede natin itanong when we are evaluating our module. The evaluation phase is all about gathering important information to see kung kailangan ba natin mag-revise? Kailangan ba natin i-improve? Baka naman yung isang activity mo hindi talaga siya captivating for our students. So, kailangan i-revise. So, part yan ng, ano, no, ng process. Okay? You can gather this information by viewing back-end data on the LMS. Oh, malalaman din naman natin. No? Baka naman merong mga questions tayo dun sa part ng assessment na nilagay natin sa, uh, sa ating module na parang hindi naman pala nabigyan ng, ng importansya when it comes to the micro-teaching doon sa module. Kasi mayroong part din tayo doon na input ng ating faculty. Okay? Yan. So, anong output after nitong evaluation? At the end of this phase, you should have the detailed information about what you need to revise or improve for this course, for this module, or for future courses using the module. Okay? So, what are the pros and cons ng paggamit ng uh, ADI model? Yung advantage ng ADI model, commonly used yan. Okay? And widely accepted model. It is also proven to be effective for learning. Foundation for other learning models, dahil marami mga models na ngayon na nagsimula sa ADI model. And easy to measure time and cost. What are the disadvantages? It's rigid, linear process. Okay? Very prescriptive siya. Must be followed in order. Hindi pwedeng iterative. So when you say iterative process, di ba? You can start anywhere. Pero dito, kailangan mag-analysis mag ka muna, design, develop, implement, then evaluate. Inflexible siya to adapt to changes and does not allow for iterative design. Okay, so that's ADI for you, the ADI model. So pwede natin gamitin tong ADI model na to, ano? Um, another is the Gagne Briggs Nine Events of Instruction. Okay. So meron tayo dyan yung gain attention, going to enhance retention, transfer to new situations. Okay. Um, this was the first prescriptive model of instructional design. Um, of course, kailangan pa rin natin ng analysis, ng contextual analysis. Although hindi na nilagay dito. No? Ito yung mga series of activities na. It centers around three basic questions to be answered. Number one, what is known about human learning and what is relevant for instructional design? Two, is this knowledge about human learning applicable onto concrete situations of learning? Ito yung mga sinasagot niya. Number three, 
which methods and procedures can be applied in order to use effectively the knowledge about human learning for the design of instruction. Okay, so the Gagne Briggs model, yung nine events of instruction, describes how teaching should be generated to adjust to the basic force of learning as well as the contents to be taught. So kasama dyan, no? yung um, how do we teach and also the content to be included. So mainly, yung nine events na yan, pag tinignan mo horizontally, no? from gaining attention, going to stimulate the recall of prior knowledge, ito yung tinatawag natin preparation of learning phase. Present the stimulus material to elicit performance. Ito naman yung tinatawag nating acquisition and performance phase. From providing feedback, going to enhance retention, transfer to new situation, that is what we call the transfer of learning phase. Okay. So here we have the preparation of learning phase. Okay. We have gaining the attention of students. You start the lesson with a bang. Ayan, uh, you start with interesting questions or thought-provoking questions. Show an image or start the lesson with game connected to a lesson goal. Parang yung idea natin ng motivation. So in terms of our face-to-face -face learning, isa yan sa preparation of learning, yung motivation. Okay? May mga naalala rin ako dati na uh, ang motivation daw, kahit na hindi siya related sa, sa lesson, okay lang. No. Okay? If we follow the nine events of instructional design, kailangan purposive ang ating mga activities. Okay? So, ganun din in our module. Kailangan yung mga activities natin may purpose. Uh, inform students of the goals of the lesson. Tell students what they are going to learn. Share your expectations sa mga bata. Kailangan explicit, no? Kailangan nakalagay dun sa module kung ano ang kailangan nilang malaman after nila, ah, anong kailangan nilang natutunan after nilang uh, gamitin yung module mo. And stimulate the recall of prior learning. What do we already know about the concept? Okay, yung prior knowledge. So, activating the schema. So, yan yung ano natin. Preparation of learning. Um, acquisition of performance. We have model the stimulus material. Show new information to the students. So, in terms of ano yan, uh, the strategy. Expository. Okay, expository teaching. Provide guidance about what the students will learn. Show students how to learn about the new concept. Elicit the student's performance. Student undertakes tasks that will internalize new information. Okay? So, ganito yung idea niyan sa acquisition and performance. I remember when it comes to ano, no, teaching, halimbawa, music, um, ang ginagawa dati ng mga teachers kapag sa music, yung may kakantahin sila. Ako muna ang kakanta. Diba? Si teacher muna. Maglilisten lang ang kanya mga sigyante. Yung second part would be sabay tayong kakanta. So teacher plus the student. And the third one is kayo naman ang kakanta, ako naman ang makikinig. So those are part of this acquisition and performance. Okay? So meron siyang sinusunod na procedure. Next is transfer of learning. Transfer of learning is um, ano yan eh, more on um, the model kasi focuses on the five basic forms of learning according to Gagne. Verbal information, intellectual skills, cognitive skills, attitudes, and motor skills. So, ito yung mga dapat nating i-transfer. Kailangan makita ng mga bata in terms of the application. So, provide feedback about the performance. Give specific feedback about how students are progressing. Oh, mahalaga to, no? In terms of the delivery. Um, 
sa module kapag ganyan um, kapag sa sa kai yung feedback dapat immediate immediate dapat yung feedback kasi dapat ang feedback din natin specific specific and immediate kasi kung ang focus natin is the performance anong ginawa niya na performance activity dapat malinaw sa kanya ano yung mga tama good points niya at ano yung mga points to improve okay um, actually yung ginagamit for for kai for online then ay kapag nagfi-feedback tayo we refrain yung mga harsh words kailangan medyo ano no uh, something na motivating for them yan so more of the growth minds growth mindset Assess student performance. Investigate whether students have understood the concept. And the last is enhance retention and transfer. Students reflect on their own learning. Yung mahalaga. Kaya madalas pag uh, sa module makikita natin merong merong part talaga for reflection. Okay, kailangan nagre-reflect ang bata dun sa process ng learning. Okay? Kasi more of ano yan eh, uh, ang learning, ang module kasi is self-directed. Okay. So, yun ang ano, ano, kay Kanye. Pero meron pang iba mga models na madalas na ginagamit din ng ibang mga institution. And one of which is this 5E, instructional model. So, in addition to other models, some institutions follow this 5E. In particular, Dr. Felina P. Espique of St. Louis University, Baguio City, presented in a webinar hosted by CHED Region 1, discussed their take in their preparation of their instructional module using this 5E model. So the 5E model was developed as part of the BSCS, the Biological Sciences Curriculum Study, to improve the science and health curriculum for elementary schools. Okay? So the 5E method is a constructive model of learning. It includes five stages. So we have engage, explore, explain, extend, and evaluate. So each stage of instruction details the ideas, concepts, and skills needed for student inquiry. So inquiry-based. In addition, there are expected behaviors for, for teachers and students as well as opportunities to demonstrate learning through application. So yun yung, uh, ano, no? yun yung strength nitong ano, no? 5 E's. Okay? I, I forgot regarding this, ano, nabanggitin ko yung, ano, no? yung kanina sa 5 E's. Okay? Yung ilan sa mga gumagamit ng 5 na ng 5 zone ng 9 events of instructional design ang strength niya as you can see very specific siya very detailed siya and as you can see parang kumpleto siya when it comes to face to face di ba um, parang ganyan yung lesson planning ko okay so ganyan din madalas ang ginagawa sa 9 events of instructional design kapag sa module, to apply para kang nagtuturo rin ng face-to-face. -face. Okay? Kaya lang, pag tinignan mo naman siya na in events, parang ang daming, uh, ang daming elements. Okay? May mga ilang mga models na nag, ano siya, uh, they do away with this kasi may ilan mga mga processes, may mga stages siya May mga events siya na pwedeng pagsama-samahin. Okay? Kaya they come up with a more ano, no? simplified versions. Yan. Um, okay. So yung engage stage, balik tayo dun sa 5 E's. Sorry for the interruption. Engage stage. To engage students, teachers should connect the topic or con concept with the prior understanding. Parang yung pangatlong events dun kay Ganye. Diba? Yung prior understanding, connecting with the prior understanding of learners. Students are encouraged to ask questions or draw on experiences. So the teacher does not correct any misconceptions 
about the topic or concept, but thus make notes about revisiting these misconceptions. Okay? So nakikita ng, ng teacher dito yung mga learning gaps sa engage pa lang. So the purpose of the engagement stage is to get students excited and ready to explore the topic or concept. Okay? So excited. Maging excited sila do sa learning. That's why we have engage. Okay? Explore. Once students are interested, they can begin to investigate the problems associated with the topic or concept. Students pose real questions and develop hypotheses. The key concepts in the topic are identified while teachers provide hands-on activities. Students develop the skills that are needed to test their ideas. And the teacher does not provide direct instruction at this time. Okay? So instead, Anong ginagawa ni teacher? The teacher leads students through inquiry-based questions as students work cooperatively in groups. So this is part of the, ano, no, the explore. Wala pa masyadong teacher intervention. During this stage, time is given to students to refine their hypothesis as they begin to reflect on the results of their investigations. Then comes the third stage, explain. Students develop explanations for what they have already observed. They begin or they define the necessary vocabulary and connect their findings to prior knowledge. The teacher should support student discussion and answer student questions on this stage. Okay. Sa explain. So dito meron ng input. Okay. While this stage is a, is a direct instruction phase, the discussions mean that this new information is shared collaboratively. Okay. Then we have uh, extend stage or in terms of this elaborate. Uh, research shows that students need to solidify their understanding by connecting what they have learned to something that is real. So dito papasok yung application to real life. Explain stage uh, focuses on applying the information they had dun sa unang tatlong stage na letter E is engage, explore, and explain so that students may formulate new hypotheses. So the new hypothesis can be tested in new investigations. And so may practical applications in terms of elaborate. Then the last stage, that's evaluate. Students return to the engaged phase to compare their earlier understanding of what they know and they address any misconceptions they held. And the teacher makes sure these misconceptions are corrected. They reflect on what they know and how they are now able to prove what they know in writing, discussion, and demonstration. So that's part of the five E's. Actually, pwede natin translate itong five E's na to from the face-to-face into a modular type. Okay. Um, so those are the widely known ano, ano, mga instructional models. Let me share to you two models na ginagamit ng PNU. Okay. The first one is the the affective cognitive experiences for self-learning. Mas kilala siya na ACES. Or, yung iba naman ang tawag is 4 A's model. Okay? So, yung phases of value learning, kasi this one is affective and cognitive ang, ang target niya. So, in terms of the phases of value learning, so yung affective, nandun sa taas na yung value learning. Learning trigger phase, values clarification phase, yun yung pangalawa directive or inculcation phase, and action phase. Sa stages naman, will cater on the cognitive. Activity, analysis, abstraction, and application. Okay? So, yung unang phase at unang stage, pwede yung ano yan, pagsamahin. Learning is triggered by structured learning activities or experiences from which learning both cognitive and affective will spring. Activity, such as individual disclosure or self-inventory, group discussion, 
moral dilemma, and others. In this phase, the student starts to clarify or understand his own feelings, ideas, or thoughts about specific situations contained in the activity. Usually, he analyzes his values through introspection and further clarifies with other students through group dynamics if provided for in the activity. Okay. So again, um, the second one is values clarification. I'll be I'll be um, I'll be presenting you uh, a sample of this. No, um, at yung ginamit namin na model nung ginawa namin yung sa 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 tole. Okay. Two values clarification takes a more in-depth analysis in the second phase of value learning. With the help of the teacher as a facilitator, the students further go through the values clarification process, mainly through clarifying responses of both the teacher and the fellow students. Okay. Um, syempre, parang magkaparehas lang sila. No? Pero in terms of the stages, pag tinignan mo siya, mas madali siyang unawain kung saan um, yung unang phase is bigyan ng activity ang bata. Okay? Yung activity that is related to the lesson na magtatap din ng kanilang cognitive and effective. In terms of analysis, they have to analyze yung ginawang activity dun sa first phase. Okay? Yan. So the first involves personal reflections and insights. While cognitive analysis is done through eliciting information and studying the content and concepts relevant to the lesson. The third stage is directive phase or what we call the inculcation phase in terms of values. The teacher becomes directive in his leading questions or remarks. He or she should already have highlighted the value of focus, the value focus of the lesson, the value she would expect the students to uphold, in terms of cognitive development, um, this one is a direct, uh, direct stage, no? Um, whereas further reinforcing the abstraction phase where generalization or inferences are made about experiences. It is in this phase that the facilitator enriches the learning because of the cognitive and affective inputs. So hindi nawawala. Pa rin. Kapag gumawa tayo ng module, hindi nawawala pa rin yung responsibility kay teacher to provide certain inputs. Okay? The fourth one is the action phase or the application. Practical application is done where the learner is expected to transfer his affective and cognitive learnings into actual situations. Okay? Doon sa dole namin yung sa Pinas, ikaw ang mom and sir. Sige, I'll be sharing you uh, sharing you this. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so this is more on the module 11. So this one is, um, I have written this, module 11, for social studies, uh, teachers na gumagamit ng ano na, sa Pinas Ikaw Ang Mamin Sir. So we have here module 11, the social studies teacher's toolkit. Okay, this is under the course three. So may tatlong courses siya. Um, itong courses. Yung pangalawang course namin dyan is more on the content. Yung unang course is about the um, the K-12. to Okay. Yung course 3 namin is more on the teaching. Okay. So, we have here the module introduction. Ayan. So, gumagamit tayo dito ng ayan. At the end of this module, you are expected to panakipag-usap ka lang. Second person point of view. Okay. Demonstrate understanding of the different learning theories used in teaching social studies. Apply innovative approaches 
in developing instructional materials and exhibit TPAC in planning social studies lessons. Um, included din namin dito yung it will take you 18 hours to finish the module. You may now do the pre-test after which you may proceed with the lessons in the module and the post-test at the end. So, ito yung dapat mas ano siya, no, direct ang gagawin mo, ah, gagamitin mong uh, language. Okay, walk through ko lang kayo dun sa, ano, no, sa parts ng module na ito. So, we have lesson one. Actually, there are three lessons, pero pare-parehas lang ng ginamit na, ano, uh, na part ng mga units niya. Okay? So, we have different perspectives in teaching and learning social studies. Getting ready. So, instead na gamitin namin yung, ano, uh, yung kanina, yung four A's, na... Um, we have activity, analysis, abstraction, and application. Kailangan i-translate mo yung, uh, yung gagamitin mo for the module. Kasi too technical kapag ang nilagay mo yung four A's. Okay? So kailangan medyo mas makakapture niya, magiging captivating siya para sa mga magbabasa. Okay? Kasi pag nilagay mo uh, activity, parang very, ano, no? Uh, parang teacher, ano lang siya. Para sa teacher siya. Yan. So, getting ready. So, we have here. So, kasama yan. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to. So, malinaw na kailangan nakalagay pa rin kung ano ang uh, expectation natin dun sa gagawin ng bata. Yung gagawin ng individual, ng learner natin. Then, we have gather and sort evidences. So, isa yan. Going to leveling off. So, yung leveling off is a sort of micro, ano, micro lesson. Kung saan, ikaw na yung magsusulat niyan, kung ano ang kailangan nila malaman, bukod dun sa ibinibigay natin ng mga resources na pwede nilang uh, puntahan, panoorin. So, yan. Then, what to do. Uh, ito yung kasama sa content. So, activity. So, may activity 1. Ang activity 1 ay naandito sa unahan. Yan. Gather and sort evidence. So, may, may sort of continuity. From activity 1 na nandun sa gather and sort evidences. Ang activity 2 naandito sa... Sorry, activity 2. Level 1, sorry, leveling off, activity 2, okay, bakit kailangan ng activity 2 dito sa, sa abstraction phase or stage? Kasi para malaman mo kung talaga bang nagbasa yung individual. Okay, so yan. Then, we have activity 3. Ang activity 3 is an extended Okay, the teaching approaches in social studies. So they can also include listing ng mga resources. Pwede nilang basahin. Huwag sobrang dami. Pwede nilang um, tingnan ang mga yan. Pero obviously, dapat nabasa mo rin. Yan. So approach, the teaching of social studies. Then we have follow through. So yung follow through is part of application. Then, your turn. Okay, so, yun yung, ano. So, this one is a lesson in a, in a module. Tapos, um, we have lesson 2, lesson 3. Punta tayo sa pinakadulo, ano. Um, sa lesson 3, after ng lesson 3, kailangan mo ng, Sorry. Ilagay ang ilang mga resources and references. Okay? Nang kabuan sa mga lessons na yan. Then, may mga sample din ng teaching logs. Kasi ito yung activity. So, kasama yan sa mga uh, ilalagay natin para guided sila. Okay? So, nasa yung evaluation? Yung evaluation... 
uh, meron kasi yung pre-test and post-test. So that's part of the objective. Pero, as you can see, meron din mga kasama ng mga performance-based na activities dito sa module na to. Okay? So ang iniisip din naman namin dito for module 11, dahil ang mga target audience namin ay mga OFWs. Okay? Mga dati silang teachers, nagtrabaho sa ibang bansa, pero hindi teaching. Gusto nilang umuwi for reintegration. Okay? For reintegration. Uh, nila sa teaching profession. So, ito yung pwedeng gamitin ng dolly for them. Okay? Uh, meron pang isa. Na sample. Ika lang. Okay. So, this one. Sorry, ah, hindi ko hindi ko siya pwedeng ilagay dun sa mismong presentation kasi medyo may copyright din kasi. So, pwede lang siguro ipakita pero yung copy kasi ang magiging ano natin, issue rin natin. So, this one is um, a module I have created for the DOST uh, project namin. So, establishing identities. This is lesson 8. So, e-module for the training program for teachers under RA, number 10612. Okay. So, module number, ito yung module number one, which is more of the foundations of education. This is under lesson eight na. So, lesson title, intended learning outcomes. Yan. Description. So, kailangan may description. This module will orient you on the demands of cultivating identities and promoting unity and diversity. Emerging topics such as multiculturalism and education, gender education, indigenous education, among others, shall be discussed in consonance with their implications on education. So target objectives. So yan, may kasama rin. Target and objectives. Kasi ito ay part ng lesson. Then we have the lesson proper. Ito ay naka-activity, analysis, abstraction, mini-lesson. Yan. Then we have the application. Um, dalawa ang ginamit naming platform. One is, this one is the printed out. Pero ito rin ay uploaded sa aming LMS. And, and other learning resources na pwede nilang tingnan, buksan, basahin. Okay. Okay. Okay, so going back to my presentation. So, ito yung four aces, no? As you can see, yung ilan sa mga makikita natin sa nine events, naka-integrate na dun sa activity analysis, abstraction, and application. Kung nine doon, ito apat lang. Parang mas madali siyang for us kung tayo yung magsusulat, no? So, ang ano lang naman dyan, pwedeng mag-adopt ang institution nyo ng ano no ng model ng instructional design model okay depende yan sa inyong um, vision mission statement okay so pwedeng ganun um isa pa yan isa pa yung ginamit na model this is from the PNU Visayas ang PNU Visayas is a green technology hub ng PNU sa kanila naman meron silang ginawa sa paggawa ng module nila yung Earth model. Earth model. Okay? Uh, I forgot lang yung ibig sabihin ng EARTH. Pero dahil sila ay green uh, technology hub. So, they focus on uh, focusing on yung kanilang uh, design, yung kanilang instructional design model based dun sa kung ano ang, kung saan sila kilala. Yung technology hub then yung gagamitin nila is the Earth model. Next is the IDEA model. So, PNU pa rin siya. Uh, this is from the research of 
Dr. Sigua, Dr. Tuga, the president of PNU, current president, Bautista, Dr. Bautista, and Professor Agarao in 2014. So the study aimed to develop an innovative pedagogical model for professional education based on current pedagogical practices of the professional education faculty of the five PNU campuses. So ito ay ano ng isang research nila, no? So survey was administered to gather the data while focus group discussion, classroom observations, and interviews were conducted to validate the survey results. In the documentary analysis done, the common themes of their pedagogical practices were equally identified. Kailangan identify The idea model a pedagogical innovation in professional education. So this one is under the pipe. Was created. IDEA stands for Induction of Prior Knowledge. That's letter I. D for dissection of concepts. E for experiential learning. And A for authentic assessment. Okay, so when it comes to induction of prior knowledge, we have to engage the learner to a captivating lesson. The teacher initiates and engages learners with stimulating and thought-provoking activities that will trigger their prior knowledge and build on what they already know. It prompts and stimulates the learners to develop a shared understanding and common language to help them chart a course leading to, this, to the dissection of concepts. So the second element is dissection of concepts. So as you can see here, the term dissection is used to emphasize the depth and comprehensiveness of the process of presenting the lesson to the class. Okay. Then we have E for experiential learning or experiential episodes deals with the application or transfer of the generalized concepts established in the second phase. This may take the form of one or combination of two or three of the modalities named real life experiences, simulated experiences, and vicarious experiences. The last one is A or authentic assessment. This phase focuses on the, the use of assessment methods that simulate true-to-life situations. This could be in the form of objective tests that reflect real-life situations or, or alternative methods parallel to what we experience in actual life. Okay? Actually, um, in terms of this idea model, I have developed a manuscript for the e-module ng EdTech, parang 20, 2016 ko pa yata nagawa yun. So this one, uh, share ko lang. Okay. Mm, I thought this one. Okay. So this one is the e-module for educational technology. Yeah. So ako yung mawa. This one are the contents, module one. So module one, may apat na lessons. Module two, may apat na lessons then. Yeah. So yung module four lang ang tatlong lessons. 
So, ganun din, we have the module 1, lesson 1. There's a brief description of the module and lesson objectives. So, using the idea model, um, ang ginamit ko yung para sa, ano, no? uh, yung friendly for the users. What do you already know? Let's get to know more. Let's do and discover. And how much have you learned? Yeah. So, then we have certain worksheets. Kapag ganito, printed, uh, very important yung spaces. Okay? Kung saan sila magsusulat. Kung kailangan nila magsulat. Uh, here we have lesson 2. The same, the same format lang rin naman. Um, then, certain worksheets. Ito yung mga dinagdag ko dito. Mga worksheets. Okay. Then, we have lesson 3. Worksheets pa rin. And lesson 4. I also included here rubrics. Okay? Para mas madali yung access. Then we have here. Yan. Okay. So, Punta tayo sa direct, uh, direct tayo dun sa ano, no, developing learning modules. One is important yung planning. What resources are available for me and my students? What skills do we possess? What knowledge is most important? How can I make my life and my students' life easier? Yeah, kasi nga, because of the context pa rin ng education natin ngayon. We are under emergency health crisis, no? And what support can we get from our school or university? So, yan yung mga kasama sa pwede natin for planning. Ang susunod dyan would be task analysis. You have to define your target po uh, population. You have to list the tasks to be performed. List the knowledge and skills for the tasks. And select the skills and knowledge to be taught. Okay? So, in planning, also, you have to review your course syllabi. Balikan. You have to identify the content that are essential and necessary to deliver the course outcome. So, laging babalikan natin yung course outcome, yung learning outcomes natin. Collaborate with others on which activities you can share. Ito yung very important ngayon, no? Dahil nga, uh, we have to develop compassion. We should be compassionate. Um, these are the common module structures. So the module is divided into units. Ang bawat unit may opening activity, may learning opportunities. Uh, we have practice activities. And we have the closing activities. Yan. Tapos, um, kung hinati mo siya into units, into lessons, sa dulo niya, meron kang wrap up. Kailangan, mong, kailangan mo ng generalization. May summary. Kumbaga. Tapos, we have module evaluation okay, ng kabuuan ng mga units. At the same time, yung other resources. Okay? Yan. Okay. So, in terms of the design, choose the instructional design na applicable para sa institution nyo. Kung sakaling ang institution nyo gumawa ng sarili nilang instructional design, better better. Kasi doon papasok ang branding, ang tatak ninyo. Decide on the official platform. Para saan ko gagamitin ito? Ito ba ay pang print? Ito ba ay pang LMS? Determine if it should be synchronous or asynchronous. We focus, uh, ang ano natin dito is the activities. Okay? Kung synchronous or asynchronous activities ba. And you have to draft prototypes. Okay. Very important to. Dahil yung mga susunod na gagawin, uh, I understand na ang unang priority natin ay yung first semester or first term. Okay. Kailangan muna yon. Tapos, uh, pag nagawa natin yung sa first term, may nakita tayong dapat pala may dinagdaga ko, dapat pala may tanggalin ako dito. Yung sa second term, better na yung gagawin natin. Okay. Kaya, 
continuous process yan. Okay. So, the importance of instructional design, number one, it determines the logical steps on how to proceed with the instructional process. So, kailangan ng instructional design. Yun, yun ang ano, unahin natin. Bago tayo mag-create ng module, maglagay ng content, wag muna yung content ang unahin natin. No? Wag muna yung activity ang unahin natin. Kailangan may framework tayo. Number two, ID provides the delivery method or activities the appropriate sa platform. Number three, allow student to learn the essential content. Essentials. As much as possible. Dahil ito ay maliit lang. Hindi mo pwedeng ilagay lahat ng ano mo, no? Ng katulad ng sa face-to-face. -face, yun nga ang mga na-appreciate natin ngayon. Dahil hindi tayo hindi natin kaya yung residential learning ngayon dahil dahil nga sa situation natin. Um, hindi mo pwedeng isiksik lahat sa module. Okay? Hindi pwedeng lahat yan nakasiksik sa module. Kaya kailangan piliin pa rin ang essential content. Has methods for assessment of student achievement. Kumbaga buo siya, package siya. Okay? Yan yung maganda sa instructional design. So, in terms of constructing a learning environment, kailangan um, kailangan din isama natin sa consideration natin itong social presence, teaching presence, at yung cognitive presence. Okay? So this this one is from the Community of Inquiry, or yung COI, which is from the works of Randy Garrison and Terry Anderson and Associates of the University of Calgary. So, pag sinabi nating social presence, yan, social presence is more of the ability of participants to identify with the group, communicate purposefully in a trusting environment, and develop personal and, and affective relationships progressively by way of projecting their individual personalities, building rapport, yeah, no? building relationships, pasok yan sa social presence. Um, sa so online learning at ang module mo, halimbawa kung nilagay natin sa LMS, mahalaga yung mga discussion boards. Yun ang advantage sa online learning. Pwede kang gumamit ng discussion board. Um, in terms of social presence sa, sa printed module, then pwede, they can ask or they can survey from their their peers na nakasama sa bahay. Yan. So pwede yun for social presence. The second one is cognitive presence. The extent to which learners are able to construct and confirm meaning through sustained reflection. So, yeah, reflection and discourse in a critical community of inquiry. Okay? Kailangan natin include ang critical thinking, creativity, communication, and yung sa reflection nga. Um, the teaching presence, design, facilitation, and direction of cognitive and social processes for the purpose of realizing purposefully meaningful and educationally worthwhile learning outcomes. So, alam ng bata na kapag in-access yung module mo, ito yung mga learning outcomes, ito yung expectation mo para masagot natin yung learning outcomes natin dun sa course natin. Um, in 2012, ay, syempre, may tinagdag si Nasheya and Bijerano. Okay? Kasi mapapansin natin, parang may kulang. Ganun yung idea eh, ni Shea. Parang may kulang na hindi na isama sa presence kapag gumawa tayo ng learning environment. Ito man ay mapa module para sa LMS, sa ating lesson. So yan. So kailangan merong learning presence. Learning presence reflects the proactive stance adopted by students who martial thoughts, emotions, motivations, behaviors, and strategies in the service of online learning. Okay? Kumbaga, um, for the community of inquiry, yung social presence, uh, ganito yung paraan ng ano, no, nakikita nila. 
social presence, we should provide for uh, space for introduction. Kailangan um, ma-feel din nila na wini-welcome sila at hindi lang yung ano no, hindi lang paper yung kausap nila. May ta- may may teacher pa rin doon sa sa paper. Yan, personal welcome by the instructor. Clarifying expectations of participants for sustaining a collegial environment. Providing opportunities for formal and informal collaboration. Excuse me. Processes of encouraging active participation of end users. So, yan yung mga social presence na pwede natin include in our learning modules. Cognitive presence. Individual and collaborative projects that promote inquiry. Something that uh, they have to think about dun sa, mga, sa mga activities na pwede natin ilagay. Selection of challenging but accessible content with clear connections to current and future practice. Okay? With practical application. Discussions grounded in course content that promote critical thinking. Assignments that promote critical reflection. Yeah. Teaching presence. There is an open communication about goals, assignments, submission processes, etc. Dapat clear, kailan ipapasa, di ba? Lalo pag online, pag nagpasa ka, kailangan nandun yung time. Anong time ba? Anong PST ba to? Okay, Philippine Standard Time ba to? Baka naman time, pero US pala. Okay, so dapat clear sa, atin, uh, clear sa mga bata rin yun, no? sa individual, lalo na sa pag sa online. Strong, supportive, appropriately challenging presence in discussions and elsewhere in the classroom. Active attention to student participation. Expecting modeling critical reflection. So, yung mga kasama sa teaching presence. And providing timely feedback on assignments. For learning presence, we should encourage forethought and planning by addressing the methods and strategies appropriate for task completion. Okay? Fostering monitoring and performance by checking for understanding. Mahalaga to, no? Kasi pag ikaw lang mag-isang gumagawa ng module mo or nagsasagot sa mga modules mo bilang, bilang sudyante, hindi mo nga alam kung ikaw ba ay natututo talaga. Baka naman you skip. Okay? So, yan. Kailangan merong affirmation pa rin from the, from the instructor from the module itself, going to a self-paced. Encouraging critical reflection, focus on changes in thinking related to the process and or product of learning. So those are the different presence. We have social presence, uh, presence, cognitive presence, teaching presence, and the learning presence. So what are the some tips in developing your module? So this one is from my ano na, no? personal tips. Number one is we have to do environmental scanning of the context of every stakeholders. Stakeholder. So environmental scanning is the process of gathering information about events and their relationships within an institution's internal and external environment. Okay. So we include also, um, siyempre, when we scan the environment, the access, affordability, and ability. That's part of the ano, no, digital divide. Okay? May mga questions nga re raised regarding the digital divide. If students are only rely on free data, will they be able to religiously attend asynchronous classes? Hindi lang to synchronous, no? Kasi synchronous kung free data nga, nauubos ng data natin. Paano pag magpapasa na sila ng kanila mga, may mga submissions na, okay? asynchronous D. Kaya ba? Okay. How can they download the resources if they don't have smartphone or computers? And more than the access, can they afford education in various formats? And do they have the ability to navigate this? Okay. So knowing all of this helps in making a data-driven decision making. Number two is decisions about what activities to be provided can be informed using the bandwidth immediacy matrix. This is from Daniel Stanford, okay, from the Creative Commons. 
Ito yung gawa niya. Pag sinabi natin bandwidth, uh, syempre pag bandwidth may kinalaman sa technology. No? High bandwidth technologies work great for high-end computers. Yung may mga fast and reliable internet access and unlimited data plans. Okay? This may limit full participation of other students and further can jeopardize their success in the course kapag yung mga activities natin will require high bandwidth. Yung nasa taas, yung yellow and red, high bandwidth ang kanilang mga uh, activities. Okay? When you do online. Yung nasa baba naman, low ang bandwidth nila. So, yung second naman, so we have bandwidth, we have immediacy. This refers to how quickly we expect our students to respond when interacting with us and with each other. Okay? So, tingnan din natin. Kasama yan sa, ano eh, sa environmental scanning, no? yung kayang gawin ng mga bata. So, kung anong kayang, uh, ano yung kakayanan ng mga bata, dun na magkakaroon tayo ng decision, anong mga activities ang pwede? So, ito yung sa number two. Number three is capitalize on your learner's intelligences. Okay? Be, ano no, parang it sounds, ano na, old. Na laging sinasabing ganito na meron tayong ibang, uh, meron tayong iba't ibang intelligences. Nine, according to Gardner, no? From logical to existential. Actually, yung original yan, two, four, seven. Okay? So, yung nadagdag would be naturalistic and existential nito lang. Ito. Okay? So, you capitalize on your learner's intelligences. When you plan for the learning activities, kailangan may options pa rin for differentiation. Okay? May provision ng differentiation. Another, oh, ito kay Gardner din, no? Hone the five minds for the future. Ako nga, kung hindi pa ako nagbasa nung mga nakaraan, hindi ko ma-encounter itong five minds for the future. Actually, parang bago lang sa akin to eh. Pero, remember the deep book context, um, dapat maging futuristic din tayo in mitigating the risks brought about by the deep book world. So, uh, Gardner concerns himself with the kinds of minds that people will need if we are to thrive in the world during the eras to come. In the interconnected world, we also need to identify the kinds of minds that we should develop in the future. So, kailangan i-develop din natin ang mga sumusunod. So, we have five. Uh, respectful mind. Very important yan, no? Respectful mind. Para more of the ethics, the values. Disciplined mind. Reflective mind. Creative mind. And the last one is the connecting or the synthesizing mind. Okay. So we need to hone these five minds for the future. So kasama rin yan. Uh, bukos sa 21st century skills na nilalagay natin dun sa na kailangan natin i-consider sa paggawa ng module, this hone, we have to hone the five minds for the future. Number five, learning is evolving. It emphasizes a more connectivist approach to learning and teaching. Have you heard about Jutagogy? Jutagogy focuses more on self-determined learning and self-learning. Piragogy or paragogy. Peer-based learning. We learn from others, from our peers. Then cybergogy focuses on helping adults learn effectively in a virtual environment. Cybergogy. Okay. Number six is flexibility builds individualization. So, mas flexible ang ating approach. Mas kinikater natin yung individualization. So, this is from the UDL, Universal Design for Learning. Um, very, ano siya, no? Very famous for special education. However, we can also include it in our teaching. The why of learning. This is more of the engagement. The what of learning. Kailangan, um, pag nagbigay tayo ng samples, mas maganda kung mas maraming samples. Hindi lang isang representation. The how of learning. This is more of the action and expression. 
for strategic goal-directed learners differentiate the ways that students can express what they know. Kaya yung activities, mas maganda kung flexible. May options sila. Okay? They can choose from kung paano nila ipapakita yung uh, learning outcome. Number seven, grit. Inject positivity and grit in your content. Use the life stories yan, uh, available to develop perseverance and passion. And grit. Um, Siyempre, I think you heard about the the psychologist na nag-coin ng grit. Yan, si Dr. Angela Duckworth, a researcher at the University of Pennsylvania. Okay? Grit is a strong predictor of success and ability to reach one's goals. So, kasama rin sa idea na natin ilalagay sa module, yung grit. Okay? Yan. Para hanggang katapusan, ng kanilang module ay they can persevere. Yan. Passion. Number eight is unleash the potential of your learners by seeing opportunities rather than limits. The growth mindset. Particularly, makikita natin to in terms of the feedbacking. Okay? By Carl Dweck. Um... He coined the terms fixed mindset and growth mindset to describe the underlying beliefs people have about learning and intelligence. When students believe they can get smarter, they understand that effort makes them stronger. Therefore, they put in extra time and effort, and that leads to higher achievement. Okay? So, maraming pwede paglagyan yan sa, ano natin, sa elements ng ating module. Pwede rin sa ano, no? uh, concluding remarks yung sa dulo na natapos nila ang kanilang ano, congratulations, so that's part of that. O kaya dyan sa introduction pa lang. Okay. Number nine, learning is not mechanical. Our brain informs us how to learn more effectively. Brain-based. Our module should also be informed by this BBL which refers to teaching methods, lesson designs, and activities that are based on the research about how brain learns. Okay? So in a nutshell, brain-based education says everything we do uses our brain. Okay? Maraming mga principles yan. Actually, I have encountered 12 principles. Ang isang publishing house, they, ano, ano, uh, they summarize these principles, 12 principles into six, yata yan, or five. Yan. Marami. Uh, isa sa mga principles niyan ay yung chunking. New evidence suggests that the value of teaching content in even small chunk sizes. Nakakatulong yun. Okay? Yung value ng teaching content. Ano pa? Uh, humans have the remarkable capacity to, to display many emotions. Marami, no? But only six of them are hardwired. Meaning, nung ikaw ay pinanganak, uh, it is, those, um, those emotions are built in us at birth. Ano-ano yun? Sadness, joy, disgust, anger, surprise, and fear. So, yun yung mga yan. And the last one of the tips, the interrelationship between the dimensions of the learner environmental factors, relationships and learning opportunities provide for holistic development of an individual. Kaya kapag sa module, binabalikan natin yung KSAV, yung knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values that makes up a person, yung person na holistic. Okay, so yan. So, pwede natin include itong sampu when we develop our modules. Okay? So, in summary, an effective learning module has the following core elements. We have the ATI, analysis, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. As an instructional designer, the instructor must wear various hats. Kasi iba-iba yung mga roles na kailangan natin i-keep in mind. Yung mga job descriptions. The new roles of instructional designers are co-creator, as a manager, and as a coach. 
There are various instructional design models. The structure, including the elements and how they are sequenced, is one you define. Pwede siyang institutional defined. Modules can be developed in linear or iterative ways and consider the various principles and theories of learning and development. As you can see in my presentation, parang modular type na rin siya. No? Ayan, may, may summary pa rin sa dulo. Okay? Although, hindi ko na kayo ititest. Walang evaluation. Okay? So, these are the references. So, I have to, um, to, I have here a quotation. To be creative, you have to contribute something different from what you've done before. Your results need not be original to the world. Few results truly meet the criterion of originality. In fact, most results are built on the work of others. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, Professor Areta, for the comprehensive presentation. I think uh, there are questions now. And for the forum, we could still accommodate some questions. Yes. Uh, we will now proceed to the forum. And may I give the floor to Dr. Salvi Magtanao? Okay. Good morning. Again, thank you, Professor Areta, for that comprehensive talk as said by Dr. Ronnie on instructional designs in module development. So participants may now ask questions. You may ask via chat or you may raise your hand. We still have 30 minutes, I think, for the open forum. Any questions? Ah, okay. May isa po. Hello? Yes. Is the chat? Mm -hmm. There are just a clarification in four A's. Where does use when the discussion takes place? Okay. So, um, the discussion or the input of the faculty in the four A's, nasa abstraction part siya. Okay, remember do the four A's, we have activity, analysis, we analyze the activity done by the students together with the students, and abstraction is a mini lesson, pwedeng mini lesson siya. Uh, ano yung mga pwedeng matutunan from the activity and how do we process the activity? So, lahat ng pwede natin ilagay for the cognitive knowledge and skills nandun sa abstraction part, just sa four A's. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir, for that answer. And I think we still have, do we still have questions from the chat? Okay. Sir, you mentioned that modules okay. can be delivered yeah. through printed mm -hmm. form or through LMS. If you are going to use the same design like Adi, can you give us some defining difference between module for print and module for LMS? Um, no, number one is the format. Okay, For print, it uses many spaces. Medyo ma, ma ano, no? Um, hindi siya ganong cost effective pag print kasi halimbawa when your task for the for the module in print kailangan nila magsulat kailangan mag-provide ka ng space for them to write to write one pero um, mas nagiging maganda yung environment yung learning environment kapag nasa online naman dahil you do not need to include so much space kumbaga mas cost effective naman Yung isa yun. um, another thing, kapag sa ito ay uh, in terms of the activities, pwede rin sa activities, mas mas, uh, sorry, mas maraming pwedeng collaboration ang ilagay kapag nasa online. Ito yung advantages na pwedeng um, mag-collaborate sa isang question, sa isang activity, ang teacher at studyante o kaya ang student to student. 
That's why we have the social presence. Mas kita agad yon sa discussion forum pa lang. Pero kapag sa ano, um, kapag sa print, medyo mahirap siya ilagay na may collaboration. Ito yung isa sa mga naging ano namin, no? Um, nung sa DOST na training, isa sa mga feedback sa amin na parang nakulangan sila sa collaboration sa uh, sa ibang co-participants. Why? Kasi nung unang na-conceptualize namin yung, yung module ay para sa print. Okay? Hindi namin agad nakita yung LMS. Yung elements sa LMS. That's why kailangan nung nung migrate namin from print to LMS, ako personally, ang ginawa ko, inatado ko yung four A's. Tapos doon sila nagsasagot. Para hindi nila makita agad na yung kabuuan paunti-unti, binabite size natin siya. Okay? Okay, so there's this one concern from Sir Orly if they can't present po yung content development to our speaker, Sir Areta, the parts of modules for Region 8 and you, you make comment on those parts. Should uh, should we have time for this? Okay lang naman po, pero um, pwedeng offline na lang kasi I guess meron kayong susunod na speaker and pag 12. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Kung okay lang kung offline. Mm -hmm. That's noted. So the the parts of the modules can be presented now offline. So we can we still accommodate a few questions, sir Ronnie. So there's one here from Evsu. I think you know, if I understood correctly, module should be read or done by students on a weekly basis. So how do we go about topics for which need more weeks? to tackle, bearing in mind that modules should have fluidity of topics. Okay. So, ang general rule naman kasi para mas madali for, for us teachers and also the students ay maging uniform sana yung pagkakahati natin into units. Okay? Yung uniformity na sana per week, mas maganda kasi per week siya. Um, although, Yung, yung nature ng, ano, ng subject, yung nature ng topic, hindi natin inaalis yon Kasi may ibang mga subjects talaga, may ibang mga topics talaga na it takes long, longer than the expected na one week lang. So, I guess pwede, na, pwede rin naman um, na yung topic na yon will go, will overflow into two weeks time, yung iba, one week time. Um, mas okay yon Kaya lang, disturbing then in terms of the scheduling. Magiging disturbing sa scheduling ng, ng mga estudyante kasi feeling nila, um, bakit itong topic nito sobrang haba? Okay? Pero, yun nga, um, kailangan natin i-consider yung nature ng topic. Okay, thank you, sir. And um, we still have one here. I think it's a follow-up question from SLSU. If the module is designed for printed and LMS, what can you suggest for us to do first? Um, of course, we have the test analysis, di ba? Um, mm -hmm. Kailangan malinaw muna sa atin, anong platform? Anong kaya ng mga sudyante? Kaya yung una natin would be the environmental scanning. So kung majority ay... Uh, wala silang stable internet, magiging problema ito tayo in terms of the LMS. Okay? Ganun din yung, yung sa amin eh, sa, sa PNU. Marami rin mga sudyante na may hirap, na hindi kaya. Pero nagkaroon kami ng um, system-wide na survey sa mga sudyante. Ilan ang mga sudyante may, uh, may devices? Ilan ang mga sudyante merong connection? Anong connection nila? Ito ba ay data? Ito ba ay by computer shop? Sila ba ay may internet, may DSL pa sila? So, yun yung mahalagang unang gawin natin. So, that's part of the environmental scanning. After that, data-driven na yung decision-making natin. Okay. Thank you, sir. We have a question from the FB Live uh, from Joy Bayrante of LNU. 
how will the faculty know the appropriate model of instructional design for a particular course? And can they just choose the model they want in the preparation of instructional modules? I guess yung instructional model design, um, guided tayo nung sinabi natin kanina na seven, seven questions, yung who, what, when, where, how, why, why what for, di ba? Um, I suggest for branding, dahil ngayon, isa sa mga trusts ng, ng universities is, brand, is branding. We actually can uh, create a certain model na sa tingin natin will fit into our institutional uh, inst institutional branding. So yon. Pero bukod doon, marami pa actually na learning na instru instructional model, the ID model. Pag tiningnan mo lahat para ma-overwhelm ka. So itong itong dalawa na una kong uh, discuss yung ADI and the nine events. Actually, yun ang widely used na ginagamit. Pero yung iba kasi, ang tingin nila dun, lalo na sa kay Ganye, yung nine events, masyadong taxing. Okay? So, yung sa amin naman, yung sa PNU, um, yun ay uh, model na nag-come up dahil dun sa research. Okay? So, yun. So, kung, kung may time for research, then we can do it. Pero kung wala naman, we can adopt muna siguro ng existing models. Okay. Um, from Engineer Bernal po of BI, BIPSU, uh, he's asking for uh, from you the link for that Dolly model for module crafting. Can you okay. provide the, the link po? Thank you. Actually, yung, yeah, yun nga, kaya hindi ko siya sinama actually dun sa, sa PDF file ng, ng presentation kasi may copyright siya. Medyo magiging <laughs> conflict kasi um, ako lang yung gumawa nung isang lesson na yun. Kaya pinresent ko. Okay? Sy syempre hindi ko rin pwedeng ipresent yung gawa ng iba <laughs> kasi wala naman akong, hindi ko sila natanong. So, itong uh, module na ginawa namin sa, sa DOLE, meron yan ang PNU at ang, ang, ang DOLE lamang. Um, sa mga nag -e enroll lang dun sa, sa SPIMS, I don't know kung ito ay available sa, sa DOLE.com, pero ang alam ko may under na department yung reintegration department ang may hawak din ng samples ng dolim dolim modules. Thank you, sir. Um, we will be down to our last question. So, are there okay. evaluation models now to consider in developing learning modules? This is from VSU uh, Baredo Byron. Okay. Um, are there evaluation models? Of course, meron yan. Meron. Um, I want I don't want to preempt sana yung ano ano yung presentation kasi alam ko meron kayong RP resource person na naka task for the evaluation pero marami rin siya kasi um, in terms of the edtech kasi dinidiskus sa edtech yung mga models din may mga models din tayong ginagamit to evaluate certain um, this kind of modules or kaya ay mga trainings, pwedeng gamitin yun. Uh, one of which is IPO model at marami pang iba. Okay, so it looks like we covered all of the, the questions. Um, Professor Rita, is there anything else would you like to add or to mention before we end this session? Actually, um, yun nga, um, Ang module ay mahalaga rin for flexible learning. Um, first and foremost, hindi natin siguro kung bibigyan tayo ng, ng, ng preparation, uh, ng time to prepare this, uh, the courses na meron tayo ngayon, um, 
obviously, kung August pa naman ang pasukan, kakayanin, kakayanin. Tapos maraming mga resources na ginagawa na natin dati. Kung may mga individuals, mga faculty tayo na matagal na nagtuturo, <clears throat> balikan natin yung baul natin. Kasi yung, yung mga nasa baul natin, yung nasa, uh, yung sinave natin sa, sa online, sa digital drives natin, marami na tayong resources doon. Hindi mo kailangan na sobrang kailangan na bago. Remember ngayon, iba rin yung situation natin. So, we also include yung situation ng ating faculty. So, yun. So, for me, yung sa, sa PNU, kasi gagawa rin kami ng toolkit, ako, luckily, buti na lang yung na-assign sa akin, yung lagi kong tinuturo na. And I have created certain modules na for that. So, I can actually call from my, from my, ano, ano, from my, Uh, baul, <laughs> na sinatawag, para i-integrate ko na lang doon sa toolkit ko. So, happy happy planning! Diba? Yes, thank you. And I think that concludes uh, this morning's session. Thank you again, Professor Oreta, for the inspiring and engaging talk. So, isang mapagpalayang araw po sa ating lahat. Thank you and good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ambi Magtanaw. Um, to award the Certificate of Appreciation to our resource speaker, may I request the Chair of the Content Development Committee, Dr. Jude A. Duarte, to do the honors of presenting the certificate. Or uh, if uh, Sir Jude is not available, uh, then we could also we could request uh, Dr. Mirna Makalinao the Vice President for Student Development and Auxiliary Services of the Leyte Normal University. Good morning. On behalf of Dr. Jude A. Duarte, the President of Leyte Normal University and the Vice, I mean, and the Chairperson of the Content Development uh, Committee, I hereby award the Certificate of recognition to Professor Jerry C. Areta. The certificate reads EVHEI's FLMSC Eastern Visayas Higher Education Institutions Flexible Learning Management System Consortium Certificate of Recognition um, is awarded to the Certificate of Recognition is presented to Professor Jerry C. Areta for his invaluable service as resource speaker during the training workshop and course modules production for flexible learning in higher education institutions webinar series on June 12, 2020, given this 12th day of June in the year of our Lord 2020, signed the Norberto C. Olavides, PhD, President uh, of Palampon Institute of Technology and the Vice Chairperson of the Content Development Committee, Jude A. Duarte, DPA, LME President and Chairperson of the Content Development Committee, Victor C. Caniezo, Jr., PDD, Interim um, the president of the interim institution, I mean, in, of the consortium. And uh, George M. Colorado, PhD, uh, director for uh, CHED Regional Office 8. And uh, Commissioner Aldrin A. Darilag, PhD, um, the chairperson of the Board of Regents of Leighton Normal University. So to Professor C. Uh, Jerry C. Areta, thank you so much and good morning. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Makalina, and thank you, uh, Professor Areta. Thank you. So before we finally end the morning session of day two, may I present again some more reminders? So we are, we are just concluding the uh, 
morning session of day two. So the webinar series will still be up to June 19. And then we have here our speakers, some more speakers for our webinar series. And then we have here the attendance link. picture around the and of course uh, the Facebook page of the consortium content development so you could uh, give messages and that is now the end of the morning session of day two thank you for uh, attending. Thank you to our speakers. Thank you to the presidents of the 10 SUCs. In behalf of the president of the University of Eastern Philippines, Dr. Cherry I. Ultra, we would like to thank you for participating in this webinar series. Good noon. Thank you. Thank you for...